25 years old and I just leased an apartment for the first time ever. Now, upon hearing that, you might assume that I've been living in my parents' basement up until now, but surprisingly, that's not the case. I actually moved out after college, but I didn't get an apartment. I traveled and lived all over the country using Airbnb. And I actually really enjoyed that kind of lifestyle because at Airbnb, you pay a one-time fee for a fixed amount of time, you live there, and then you can move right after. And uh, it comes with all the amenities, comes with Wi-Fi. It's totally ready to move in and you can just go and live from place to place. Just in the past two years, I've lived at over 10 Airbnbs. And if you follow this channel for a while, you've probably seen the background changing so frequently. But unfortunately, my time with Airbnb has come to an end specifically because it gets really exhausting every few months having to look for a new affordable listing I can move to next. Usually I'd stay at each one for around two months. And by the end of the two months, I'd just have to keep scrolling through Airbnbs waiting for prices to drop. So it got me thinking, there should be a tool that tells you when Airbnb prices drop. This way, instead of scrolling on my phone and keeping an eye on particular listings, I can just hit a button and see which Airbnbs have decreased in price. And when I think about it, I'm actually a programmer, so I should just build this. So that's what I did. So the first thing I did was I went to Airbnb and checked to see if they had a developer API I could get access to so that I could just build this web app super quickly. Unfortunately, all I could find was a developer API for hosts and Airbnb seems to be extremely limited in who they give access to this API. And if I remember correctly, I think they're not even giving access to their API right now. Obviously it wasn't gonna work, so I figured scratch that. I guess I'm gonna have to build a web scraper. Now I'm no novice when it comes to web scraping in Python. I've built some pretty big projects, one of which where I went to leak code and I scraped all the information to generate thumbnails for my videos. So then what we're using is we're using beautiful soup to get this question list right here. But in this case, it was really difficult to get that Airbnb data. What made it hard is not only the user interface of Airbnb, where there's a lot of searching and filtering and pagination, but also there's so much data for each listing. Like it's just a lot of bulk data I needed to get. And it was going to take way too long and just be too difficult for me to build. At this point, I was really dreading building the rest of this project and was uh, considering giving up. But that is when I found Bright Data. So Bright Data is a collection tool that makes it incredibly easy to retrieve public information from the internet. Basically, they've developed advanced web scraping systems to help retrieve the data that you want. And in this case, Bright Data is exactly what I needed for this project to come together. So at this point, now that I knew that I could build my project using Bright Data, I went ahead and built the rest of the application. And Bright Data also happens to be the sponsor of this video. So go over to the description, click brightdata.com, and it'll take you here. And if you go up to Web Data Data Collector, it'll say scrape web data at scale with zero infrastructure, which is exactly what I need for this project. It says right here, instantly extract publicly available data from any website with Data Collector, the world's number one web scraper. Um, I'm already signed in. Let's head over to the user dashboard and I'll show you how this works. So on the top left, you have a dashboard, but what you're gonna wanna go to is the Data Collector platform and go to Collectors. And this is actually where you would set up your web scraper to go and get the data for you. And what's cool is they have a bunch of templates for these web scrapers that you can already use. So for example, if you guys wanted to use a web scraper, you just go to the top right, it says develop a self-managed collector. And look at all these templates. You could either start from scratch and build your own customized web scraper, but you can also just use any of these templates. So for example, if we used Amazon, it would take us to a page with a coding editor that already has a bunch of template scraping code here. So you could also customize on top of these templates to get the results that you want. And they also have this preview box so you could see exactly what you're doing while you develop your collector. And even if you write your own code, you'll still be able to benefit from Bright Data's proxy network and unlocking tools. This makes it easier to collect data from sites that are otherwise difficult to scrape. And so if we head over to my Airbnb collector, you can see these are all the properties and values for those listings that I'm getting. And you could customize this further, um, but I don't need to. And it's based on the city, so I'm getting the listings based on the city. And then if we go to delivery preferences, I'm getting it delivered via JSON format and it's being delivered because I have a webhook that is sending this data to my backend Flask application, which I'm hosting on Heroku, and I have an endpoint to retrieve the data. 
So at slash listings, I am actually taking all of this data and I'm going to store it in my own database, which I'm using MongoDB in this case. And so this is what the endpoint slash listings actually looks like where Bright Data sends the data. So Bright Data will send the JSON data for all the listings, we'll extract that JSON data, we'll check to see if the database already has listings in it or not for a particular city. If it doesn't, then we will just insert all of that raw data into the database in MongoDB. Otherwise, we'll actually go through and compare the data that we're pulling from Bright Data to the existing data in the database to check for price discounts on the Airbnb. And if there are price discounts, we will actually do updates into my MongoDB database. And over here, you can see this is my MongoDB database and there's 300 total documents. These are all the Airbnb listings that I retrieved using Bright Data's collector. So the way my web application is going to work is I'm gonna input a particular city Bright Data will go and get all of the listing data and pull it down, send it to my backend, and that will be stored in a database. Whenever I check for lower prices, Bright Data will once again go get all that listing data. And if there's already data in the database, we'll compare each listing. And if there's a discount, we'll update in the database and display that to the front end. And so we also have to initiate this collector to go and get that data. So in my case, I'm just going to have a button on my application called check for lower prices. And when I do this, it's actually gonna ping this API. So you can initiate the collector to go and get the data by API. And they tell you the code to put like right here. So I have an Axios request, it's gonna ping this endpoint and you pass in the city that you're gonna to select to get the listing data for. So keyword Austin, for example. And then it's going to initiate this collector to go out and get all of the listing data for Austin, which will then go to my backend, go into the database. But there's also other ways that Bright Data allows you to initiate these collectors. So you could do something like initiate it manually if you just wanted to go to the collector. This is probably really good for testing and you just hit start, it's gonna go get that data feed it to my backend. Or another thing you can do to initiate the collector to get the data, which would be really cool for this application in particular, is I could run it on a schedule. So I could run this daily to check for lower prices. So this would come in handy in this case specifically. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for demo purposes and to make the video easier for you guys to understand, but it is a really neat feature that would definitely be useful in a lot of applications. So now let me run you through how the application actually works. So on the front end, we have a Next and TypeScript app, and on the back end, we have a Flask app with Python. So this is on localhost 3000 right now, and you would basically wanna select the city where you want to get listing data from or to check for price discounts on Airbnbs. And when you click check for lower prices, that's what initiates the Bright Data Collector to go and get the data. Now, if there's data in the database already, it's gonna compare and then we can actually hit show all discounts, which will show the discounted listings. Or we can just hit show all listings because we have all of those. So if I do show all listings in Austin, Texas, these are actually the live Airbnb listings currently available for you to book in Austin, Texas. And if I scroll down, I could actually find the Airbnb I first stayed at when I moved to Austin. And if you look, here is all the data getting uh, logged out to the developer console. You can see there's 300 listings here, tons of data. These are all the properties and values that we're retrieving, which you could customize on Bright Data. But uh, I'm only displaying a few things. I'm displaying the rating, the current price. And then if we click, we can actually go check the live listings which is they're available for booking right now, which is pretty cool. So now if we actually go back to the app and I hit check for lower prices, Bright Data is gonna go, it's gonna check all those listings and see if anyone has decreased the price. And then when we hit show all discounted listings, they should display below. Now it takes a little bit of time to actually scrape all of that data. So for demo purposes, I'm just gonna show you what it would look like if a listing was discounted. So if I do show all discounts, it would show the last price per night and the current price per night, which is $40, and then it would show the price discount. So if you could see, if we look at show all listings, we could see that the current price per night was $96. And then if we do show all discounts, it would look like this. So current price per night, 40, there's a 56. So they dropped the price to 40 and the discount would be $56. So it's only gonna display the discounted listings. This is actually just me sending a request to my backend to update my database with that listing ID, just to show you for demo purposes. But I am actually going to run this now using check for lower prices and actually send that collector to scrape the data and see if there have been any discounts because the last time I scraped the data was two days ago. 
All right, so back at our application, it's currently running locally. The back end's running locally. You can choose the city. You can check for lower prices. This is only just pinging my back end and really doing nothing, but you can see how the city updates. And I'm going to show you the next in TypeScript code. So we have an interface for listing. So as we collect the data, we can display it using the interface. We have some state to set the city and to set the listings, all of the cities, of course. And you can see the select updates to set city and you go down below and we have those three buttons which call different functions. Now, the most important one we're about to go over using actually bright data to get real data is uh, this button check for lower prices. So when we click check for lower prices right there, it's going to call fetch Airbnb data with the currently selected city. We're going to do Austin and then down here. We have fetch Airbnb data. It actually will ping bright data. It will send it the keyword city. So we're gonna do Austin. Uh, you have to have your authorization so they know it's you. And I'm just gonna update this to our live URL, the bright data URL. And now the next time we click this, when we select Austin, bright data is actually going to initiate, go to Airbnb, get all of the listings in Austin and send them to our backend. And so let's get started here. Let's actually keep an eye on our collector because we'll be able to see, so it's been three days since we used it last, we'll be able to see when it's actually initiated. So when we click this button, make sure we select Austin because we don't want new data for a new city. So when I click check for lower prices, the bright data collector will be initialized. So I'm gonna click. And now if we go to bright data, if we refresh, okay, two seconds ago, okay, cool. So it should be running with collecting the data for Austin. Okay, this is exactly what I want. Perfect. So now we wait for the collector to get the data and we see if there's been any discounts. Okay, so I just waited for a little bit and it's actually done. So if I refresh, looks like we have done two total runs. So we're done. That means that our database should be updated with the newest data, especially if there were decreases in price. So if in the past three days, no Airbnbs have decreased in price, then, you know, nothing is going to happen here. Um, after all of that, no Airbnbs are lower priced than three days ago in Austin. Well, that, ah, uh, dude. Okay, so since none of the actual Airbnbs in Austin went on sale, there's no discounts, maybe they are raising the price or keeping them the same. I'm just gonna show you how it would work in the uh, database. So if we show the listings, these are all the Austin Airbnbs. Once again, we can see the price of the first three are 97, 89, and 88, right? 97, 89, 88. And uh, if we look in our database, they're right here, right? So you can see if we zoom in price per night, 97, 89, 88, right? The database is in order too. So I'm actually going to send these objects to my backend and say that the prices are discounted now. So we could see what that would look like. Um, so over in our Next.js application, I've copied over the IDs of those listings and some new prices. So I went 93, 71, and 68. So once we send this to our backend, it should update in the database, and then we should see some discounted prices instead of zero discounted prices. So we're gonna do check for lower prices, and then we are gonna do show all discounts. And we can see here are the discounted ones because we sent that data to our backend and we can see in the database, it should also be updated. So I didn't even refresh it yet. So you could see price per night is 97 on the first, 89 and 88. And we even add new property and value uh, pairs after we update. So you could see the price gets updated. We have a uh, 93, then we have last price was 97, which it was. And then we also show the discount of $4. Um, discount, last price, price per night, and the same thing, right? So they all got updated in the database. They all display properly in the web application. The only issue for us in this case is that when Bright Data went out and um, got these listings, the available listings currently, I did not see, that. I don't think any of them went on discount. So, or there's no sales on Airbnbs right now. So that's unfortunate, but uh, the software does work. I looked up the Airbnb listings and made sure that was true. That is true. But yeah, mainly this software application isn't built out all that much right now. You can see it's extremely simple. You could build this out so much more. 
Not only could you add way more features and make this into a legitimate product and potentially business, but you could definitely increase the efficiency. I actually had fun building this. Uh, I did it over on Twitch, on my Twitch channel. I spent like a whole day. I did like a 15 hour stream just hacking this together. So who knows, maybe I'll continue to work on this and uh, make improvements and you know, maybe I'll deploy it to AWS. That could be kind of fun. Um, just realized that Heroku is uh, taking away free project. I was thinking of like 20 projects on there, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, this is a fun project. I really appreciate Bright Data for helping out with this and for sponsoring this video. If you guys are interested in working with Bright Data, definitely go in the description, click the link and check it out. It's really awesome. So thanks for watching. If you have any ideas on how I can improve this software, drop them in the comments below or message me and uh, maybe I'll do them on stream at some point. But until next video, peace.